Heavenly Father, this morning we say thank you. Lord, we give you glory, we give you honor. We give you all the praise, all the adoration. We thank you, faithful Father, for last week's Sunday. We thank you for the beginning of this month. We thank you because, God, you have allowed us to cross into the last month of the year. We thank you for what you have done since the beginning of the year. We thank you, Father, we give you all the praise. We thank you, Lord, we give you all the adoration. We bless your holy name. We say, Lord, be highly exalted this morning in Jesus' name. Father, even as we have come before you, as we look into your word this morning, the Bible says the entrance of your word, it gives light and understanding to the simple. Lord, we pray this morning that, Father, that through your word, let our life be illuminated in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that this word, let it bring a change to our life. In the name of Jesus, let your word encourage us. Let your word edify us in the name of Jesus. Let it be well with our spirit and let it be well with our soul. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Beloved, this morning, I want to welcome you all to the presence of the Lord. And I believe that God has brought you this morning, that has allowed you to be here in his presence. The Lord, indeed, he will meet you at the point of your need in the name of Jesus. And all that you are believing God for, all you are trusting God for, I pray that God will answer speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. It will not tarry, it will not be delayed in the name of Jesus. You will have over an abundance in the name of Jesus. In our life, we shall accomplish in Jesus' name. I believe that there is someone here this morning that you shall weep no more in the name of Jesus. I believe strongly that someone here this morning, your life will take a new turn in the name of Jesus. As you have come to the King of Kings, God is willing to visit us today in the name of Jesus. And I believe that God is willing to intervene in our situation in Jesus' name. This morning, I want to encourage us, we are still in the month of divine intervention. And I believe that God wants to intervene in the life of believer. The God that we serve, we have looked into that in the, since the beginning of this year and last month, that God is willing to intervene in our life. And I want us to continue to meditate on Isaiah 41 verse 10, that God indeed is our help. And I believe the help that God will need to give to us will come our way in the name of Jesus. I don't want you to lose hope or lose your heart. And I want you to understand one thing. This life that we are going through as a child of God, if anyone promise you that it's going to be smooth all the time, it's a liar. Because this life is the life is that we are, we are into. Whether we are believer or unbeliever, life is up and down. That is what the life is made of. There will be rough time and there will be good time. And I am praying that our rough time will not be long enough. But our good time will be so long in the name of Jesus. So we are going to face storms in our life. We will go through commotions. There will be time, there will be vibration in our life. It could be in our family, concerning our job. It could be concerning our health. It could be concerning me, but I want you to understand as a child of God, the Lord will see you through in the name of Jesus. Because the God that we serve is a faithful father. The Bible says, cast your burden upon the Lord and he will care for you. And that is what the Lord will do for you in Jesus' name. This morning, as we look at the word of God shortly, and I want you to please release your faith and please open your mind as God speaks to us through his word in the name of Jesus. The title of this sermon is, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? And that is a sermon. We are in the month of divine intervention. And God is, is speaking to us. What are your thoughts? So this morning, as you are, as you are listening to, to the word of God, God is asking us that question. What are your thoughts? I want you to understand that God is willing to intervene in our situation. It means God wants to mediate into the situation that you might be going through at this time. Maybe your circumstances, the challenges in our life. Maybe we are going through a period where we are going through a period of disapproval. Maybe we are going through a period of pain or trauma in our life. It could be concerning your destiny. Maybe you are going through a period of setback at this time. And as a child of God, I want you to understand that we serve a God of divine what? Intervention. God wants to interfere into our life. He wants to intervene. He wants to intercede on our behalf and that is what God wants to do but one thing 
Beloved, I want to reassure you this morning. One thing we want to stand in our way. And one thing that want to stand in our way is our thought. Our thought is a major, one of the major barriers to divine intervention. I want you to understand that. That your thought, my thought, is a major hindrance sometimes. It's a major barrier to inter divine intervention. Concerning that situation, maybe you look in your life where you are going through, you have a lot of bondages and you have been praying to God. You have confusion in your life. Your life is already, you are confused concerning your life. But beloved, I want to reassure you because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want you to understand that God wants to intervene into that situation. God wants to intervene. But one thing can stand on your way. One thing can be a barrier from God from intervening. And that is your thought. And that is my thought. That your thought can be an hindrance. It can be something that can prevent God from intervening into our situation. And this morning, beloved, we need to understand how to deal with this. And that is why we are a child of God. Our thoughts and our words are so powerful. They are so powerful that if we cannot pay, if we don't pay more attention to it, if we are not paying attention to our words, if we are not paying attention to our thoughts, they, they can be a, an hindrance for divine intervention in our life. If you are not being aware, the, if the awareness is not there, if you are not alert, the alertness is not there about the thoughts that flow in our mind, then they can be an obstacle. They can can be a barrier to our divine what intervention my prayer today i said before the end of this sermon i pray that lord will speak to you and you'll be an overcomer in the name of jesus Amen. whatever has been an hindrance in your life before i say every predicament i said the lord will give you power to overcome in the name of jesus Amen. beloved i want us to understand that we need to program ourselves according to the word of god so that we can see tremendous result in our prayer life because i know between now and the end of the year we only have 15 days today is the middle of the month and one thing is that many of us will be praying into 2020 we're going to be laying foundation and building things in the realm of the spirit but one thing that we have to deal with is our thought when we can deal with our thought then it means our prayer can bring a tremendous result our prayer can be mighty result our prayer can be amazing result in our life in our business in our finances i want to reassure you beloved that these are things that so many christians do not pay attention to we don't pay attention sometimes we are quick to blame the devil Sometimes we are quick to blame the, the witchcraft. We are quick to blame the demonic oppression. We are quick to blame all these people. But one thing is very certain and very sure. That if we can pay attention to our thought. If we can pay attention to our thought. We shall see tremendous, amazing, excellent result concerning our prayer. People will be envious of you. Because your life will be dominated and saturated with testimony. Amazing testimony. We come your life in jesus name these scriptures i want us to understand one thing in ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 i'm going to read to us ephesians 3 20 the bible says now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. the scripture says now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all above all what we ask or think it means if you look at this scripture this scripture give us an insight into our thought and our words what they are capable of doing and that is what the scripture is telling us so it's giving us an idea of what how, how powerful our thoughts are how powerful our our words are and this morning i want us to think about it as you speak and think power is released to do the impossible whenever you think whenever you speak the power is your power is released in the realm of the spirit to do the in impossible it means to do the extraordinary so this morning beloved i want us to have that understanding that it is very important that your thought you are you are monitoring your thought you are very alert about your thought you you are very 
pay attention to your thought that goes on in your mind. And that is why Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So it means our thinking is important. It's one of the major things that we need to, to, to take care of. When we want to see tremendous results, we want to see excellent, amazing results concerning our prayer life. I am praying today for someone that even as we listen to this word, our thought will change for good in the name of Jesus. These thoughts that we have, these are our thoughts. They have the power to attract good and evil whether you like it or not whether you're a child of god whether you're a believer of jesus or not the thought that goes on in your mind they have the power to attract evil and good and that is why we must not be ignorant of this the bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge some people think it's all about praying no you just don't open your mouth that is why some people are frustrated with prayer they pray because they have not learned they have not learned the ABC of prayer. Things you need to deal with. And that is why they give up so soon. So this morning, beloved, I want you to be wise. And I want you to have that understanding. I want you to have that insight about your thought. Your thought can be a barrier to your prayer. Your thought can be an obstacle to your prayer. And that is so essential. And I want you to understand this. That is why Ephesians 3.20 told us that God will do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think so two things that bible says it talks about what we say and what we the thought that we have so i want to say that that our thought can attract it is like it's an attraction it's an invitation whatever you think in your mind is an invitation for good or for bad it can induce good things to come to you it can pull it can provoke good things to come so also it can provoke evil things and that is why we need to be aware of this what it can do in our life your thoughts are like magnets they are spiritual magnets and that is what they are they are drawing towards you and they can draw things away from you and that is what your thought can do such that is the power of thought in the realm of the spirit that is what your thought can do so this morning beloved why we know that thought can be a barrier it means we need to have an insight into our thought what is a thought okay I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this one that what exactly is a thought a thought is an idea or opinion produced by thinking you produce thought by thinking thinking is not thought thought is a product of thinking it is an idea or opinion you produce because of your thinking the action you took inside of you is called thinking. So occur and it occurs suddenly. It is produced suddenly in your mind. This thinking takes place in your mind. Beloved, I want you to understand that thoughts they are they are they are ideas or opinion that you produce as a result of your thinking exercise. So we have what we call the thought process. A thought process is the use of words. So you are talking about, okay, how do I actually produce thoughts? Thoughts are produced with the use of words and images. And all of these things happen in your mind as a believer. You have to understand this as a child of God. If you don't understand it, you will suffer in prayer. You will suffer loads of loss in prayer. So what they do is they create idea. The words that you are thinking on, the image you are thinking on, they create what we call ideas or opinion, which is called thought. This is a form, it's a substance. They construct what we call thought in your mind. And when this mental synthesis has happened, this can be a barrier or it can be an hindrance or also it can attract what you are praying for. So thought is a product of mind. So thought is a product of mind. Because in your mind, that is where your thinking takes place. Now as you are seated this morning, I don't know what you are thinking about. Beloved, but one thing I want you to understand, you must, be, uh, you must have the alertness. You must have the ability to master your thought if you want to see results in your prayer. If you want to be, it's not how long you pray. 
Some people can pray for seven hours and get no result. It is not about how long you pray. It is the quality of your prayer. It is how, how well you pray. That is very important. That is where you must have the ability to master your thought. Thought is a concentration to gain a knowledge on a condition or situation or circumstances. How does your thought arise? It arises inside of you because you want to gain more knowledge. You want to gain more understanding about a condition or situation you are going through. Maybe you are going to set back in a place of work. Maybe you are going to a challenge in your marriage. Maybe you are going to a challenge in your business. Maybe you are going to a challenge concerning employment. Maybe you are going to a challenge concerning your immigration status. Maybe you are going to a challenge concerning your health. Because of this situation, you want to gain more knowledge. As a result of that, the thinking begins inside. And the thinking can produce a product which is called thought. And that thought can be an hindrance either to your prayer or you can attract answer from God concerning your prayer because in the realm of your spirit your thought is louder than your voice in the realm of the spirit so we have to understand this your thoughts are louder in the realm of the spirit than your voice no matter how much you speak no matter how loud you use the megaphone the microphone to speak it is not as important as your thought beloved i want you to understand in this morning your thought is very important you need to master your thought you must not be a slave to your thought you must not allow your thought to enslave you this morning because you want to get result concerning your prayer life every thought that we produce have a feeling and a desire I want you to understand that every thought you manufacture, every thought you synthesize, every thought you produce in your mind, they have a feeling and they have a desire. When I talk about feeling, I talk about sentiment. They have an emotion, they have a reaction, and they carry a spirit. The moment you have a thought, the moment you produce a thought inside of you, that thought carries emotion. It has a desire. It means there is a passion, there is a goal, there is a motivation, there is an aspiration about the thought you produce. And that is what God sees. God does not see the voice. He sees your thoughts. We have to understand because God is spirit. The thoughts we produce, they are spirit. And that is why they are faster in the realm of the spirit than our voice. The, no matter how much of megaphone you use or last speaker you used to pray, it will not go past the ceiling. Maybe it can go like 20 miles. But I am telling you, your thoughts are spirit. And they can go far in the realm of the spirit. They can reach the heavenlies. God can see your thought more than your voice. So, beloved, it's very important. Our thoughts become our purpose and intention. When you are praying, you are praying whatever you are saying. It is your thought, the thinking, what you are producing. It becomes your intention and it becomes your purpose. And that is what God says. It becomes your motive, the motive of your prayer. It becomes the expectation. It becomes the destination of your life. So our destiny is shaped by our thoughts. Beloved, I am telling you where you are today is as a result of your thought of yesterday. You may not accept it. But that is the honest truth. It is what you think that you become. And that we are product of our thoughts. And that is what we have to understand. The, the answer to the prayer that you have, the prayer you prayed yesterday, the testimony you have today is as a result of your thoughts. And that is very essential. I want to read to you very carefully. In Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7. The Bible says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. As he thinketh in his heart, so he is. The word heart there is talking about your mind. It's talking about the thinking that is happening in your mind. Below this morning, I am praying that you will master your mind from today. Your thinking process will change in the name of Jesus. The Bible says our thoughts, they are louder than our voice in the realm of the spirit. We need to understand that we are spirit being. We are not this physical body that we are seeing. We are spirit being. And that is why before you open your mouth to speak, before you call Jesus, you have already had a, a thinking about it in your mind. Before you make your decision, you want to go to, to work, there is, you have already made a decision. What you are going to eat, you already make a decision in your mind. It means there is a thinking that's taking place and a thought is produced. So also as a believer in our prayer, it is very important. 
You cannot be thinking failure. Beloved, I'm going to say this very clearly. Some of us may not like it. You cannot be thinking failure and expect success. It doesn't correlate with the kingdom that we have signed for. It does not work. When you are thinking failure and you are praying for success, it won't happen. You are going to pray for now till thy kingdom come, nothing will change. Because your thinking does not match your words. They are co totally different. You cannot be thinking defeat and you are, you are praying for victory. It will, not work, it will not come to place. So this morning we have to understand. You cannot be thinking you are praying for abundance and you are thinking poverty. How can that match? It does not work. And that is why the prayer are not answered. Because our thinking is not correlating with our words. You are applying for job. You are applying for job and you are thinking rejection. The moment you are beginning to have that thought of rejection being produced inside of you, it means you will not get that job. No matter how much you try, the job will not be yours. Even at the last minute, you will not get the job. Because your thought is completely different. It is not, it's a barrier. It's preventing you from having access in the realm of the spirit. I want you to understand that the spirit controls the natural. The supernatural controls the natural. So everything you become in life is start from his, his birth in the supernatural that it appear in the natural and that is why our thought is the only thing we use to speak you speak with your thought you speak with your thought to God so beloved this morning I want you to understand somebody say I have a delay in marriage the reason why you are delayed check your thoughts maybe what you are thinking you are thinking you will never get married you have that thought produced inside of you many many times you are speaking to yourself beloved there is a time to make a change. You need to master your thought. You need to cancel every negative thought. You need to arrest every negative before they enslave you. Before they delay your life. Before they delay your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Maybe you are praying God for, for pregnancy. You are trusting God for pregnancy. And all the thought that saturates your mind. All the thoughts you are producing in your mind. is miscarriage. I am telling you. Even if you get pregnant. That pregnancy will come down. Because you are producing the wrong thoughts. So you need to change your thought. That is what the Bible says. Very carefully. I want us to read. Jeremiah 17.10. Please I want you to know this verse. If there is no Bible verse that you are going to take on today i want you to learn from this verse jeremiah 17 10 the bible says i the lord i the lord i search the heart it means i examine the art i explore the art say i the lord i search the art i test the mind i test the man even to give every man according to his way according to the fruit of his doing I the Lord, I look at the innermost man. I look at your thinking. I look at your reaction. I look at your conscience. I look at your passion, your emotion. That is I the Lord. The Bible speaks, it says, I the Lord search the heart. I test the mind. I test the mind. Even to give every man, every man, man, I mean the spirit. Every man, every woman, according to his ways. According to the fruit of his doing. Your practice. It means your invention. What you are producing. The word doing there, fruit means your invention. What you are producing. What, are you, what thought are you producing in your mind? Psalm 139 verse 1 says, Oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. That's what David says. And I believe God searched our heart. Beloved, when we pray, prayer is from the heart. And that is why I'm praying. Because I know very soon, we will be praying for, the, for 2020. Please, I want you to master your mind. Psalm 44 verse 21. Psalm 44 verse 21. The Bible says, Would not God search this out? For he knows the secret of the heart. In 1 Samuel 16, 7. The Bible says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at the appearance or at the physical status. Because I have refused him. Verse B says, For the Lord does not see a man as man sees he said for the lord looks at the out for the man looks at the outward appearance but the lord looks at the heart beloved i want us to understand this when you stand to pray god is not looking at what you wear god is not looking at, at how you dress god does not know whether you are you are wearing expensive dress or rags it does not it does not consign god what the lord is looking at is your heart
God is looking at your mind, the state of your mind. What are your thoughts, beloved? What is the thought you are producing? What are you producing? What are you generating in your mind? The Bible speaks in Mark chapter 14, verse 23. And this is the story of Jesus. I'm going to read very speedily. From Mark 7. Mark chapter 7, 14 to 23. The Bible speaks from verse 14. It said, when he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear me, everyone, and understand. Jesus speaking to the multitude. He said, hear me and understand. The word understand there means to believe, to connect, to accept the truth. Jesus said, hear me and, and believe. The Bible said, there is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile a man. He said, but the things which come out of man, those are the things that defile a man. So the word man there is not just a man, it's talking about a spirit. Because when God created man, he called the spirit man. So the Bible says, can you see what Jesus is saying? And Jesus says, it is what comes out of the man that defies a man. So it means, the word defy there means, it means to damage. Things that will damage. Things that will not cause man to be purified. It, it damages the purity of man's prayer. Something that will contaminate your prayer. Something that can corrupt your prayer. That can ruin your prayer. Something that can cripple the prayer. And that is what Jesus is referring to. He said, if anyone have ears, let him hear. When he say that, he knows what he's saying. Then in verse 17, when he had entered a house away from the crowd, look at what the disciple says. His disciple asked him concerning that parable. The word parable, there means mystery. It's a mystery. And God has given us mystery. It's mystery that we use to unlock the kingdom. The Bible says, and they asked him about the parable, verse 18. So he said to them, are you those without understanding also? He was shocked. He said, you my disciple. So you are not without understanding. Do you not perceive? Do you not perceive? Perceive means discern. Are you not having the understanding that whatever enter a man from outside cannot defile a man? Because it does not enter his heart. It does not enter your mind. It enter your stomach. He said, and it's eliminated. After a few hours, you go to the toilet. You take it out. The Bible says, it does not, it does purifying all foods. He said, verse 20 says, and he said, what comes out of a man that divides a man? What comes? It means what we produce. What is the thing we produce from inside? Our thoughts. He said, from within and out of the act of men the word act there means the mind it means in your mind there is something you are proceeding he said proceed evil thoughts so jesus is giving us a secret to answer prayer he said from the heart of a man proceed evil thoughts then he begin to mention some of the evil thoughts he talks about adultery somebody that want to go and commit adultery it does not just jump on a woman or, or a woman jump on a man. It starts from the art. You have the thought, you, you think of it, the situation, and you manufacture the thought. Fornication is the same. It comes from the art. If you murder us, people that murder other people, it's not just by accident. It's, it begins with a thought. They manufacture thought. That is what? Somebody, a thief, that go to a shop to steal or somebody's house, he manufactured the thought. It's a thinking, and so many and so forth, that the word of God talks about. In verse 23, the Bible says, all these evil things come from within and defies a man. All these evil things, they come from within and they defy a man. So therefore, beloved, what is the solution? How can you master your thought? How can you deal with your thought? So that you can have tremendous result in your prayer. That you can have a change in your prayer. If we all define our prayer, come from our thoughts. So therefore, what will purify our prayer, we also come from what? Our thoughts. I want you to understand that. What will consecrate your prayer, what will strengthen your prayer to be answered, it also comes from inside. That is why we need to walk from that inside. The Bible talks about renewal of your mind. Through the story of the world, that's the solution. You renew your mind on a daily basis through the story of the world that is why the devil will not allow believer to study the bible no matter you carry your bible you just slip off i want you to understand the bible says renewal of mind through the story of the world it will change the way we think it will change the way we think romans chapter 12 verse 2 
The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The word of God will renew your mind. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, the Bible says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there's any virtue, uh, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Beloved, I want to encourage you this morning that your meditation on the world is what will produce good thought and anytime you are in prayer you don't meditate on your situation you meditate on the word of god that addresses your situation and that is what you do and that is why david says in psalm 119 verse 11 david says your word have i eaten in my heart that i may not sin against you beloved this morning i want to encourage you that your meditation on the word is important when you begin to study the word when you begin to think on the word instead of you thinking on your situation when you begin to think on your situation the enemy will suggest wrong things to you and you begin to produce the negative thought and there will be a barrier there will be a, an entrance to the manufacturing of your prayer for you to get the amazing result that you need them but this morning i want to encourage you my beloved sisters and brother that you meditate on the word when you meditate on the word the word will produce it will strengthen your prayer it will change your life in the name of jesus i pray for you this morning lead about sato yakabrahanti anything that you have think about that has contaminates your mind makado shetiriandi and prata kabra yili kabraskia he kabasaya i want you to lay your right hand on your chest and as i decree i am praying may the power of god may he saturate your thought in the name of jesus may god empower your mind in the name of jesus i say from this hour he that was siding canoes and prata kalia he that siding katalia and I say every negative thought that has been produced in your mind. I say today that the power in the blood of Jesus, they are cleansed in the name of Jesus. I say they are terminated in the name of Jesus. I say as you go today, may the Lord strengthen your mind. May you strengthen your mind. May you strengthen your mind. May you strengthen your mind. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. Lord in heaven, we say thank you. Father, we want to thank you this morning because the Bible said the entrance of your word, it gives light and understanding to the simple. Lord, I pray for my sisters and brother. I pray may this word may illuminate your life. In the name of Jesus, I say from today, you become the master of your thoughts. In the name of Jesus, when the enemy brings negative suggestion to you, Karo Zehe Kurihandi, Pratu Zikeria Kapahakadusia, let us take a for any massacre the hunting. I say from this hour, may the Lord empower you in the name of Jesus. I say from today, may you make the word of God your thinking in the name of Jesus. That from today you begin to think about the word of God, begin to think about solution in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you glory. Blessed be your holy name, for in 